In the previous part, we understood how this osmosis, that is movement of water, takes place. Now, we would see if animal cells and plant cells are placed in hypo and hypertonic solutions, then what is going to happen? So, first situation is, we are talking of animal cells. Animal cells. An animal cell placed in two situations in hypotonic solution and the second is in hypertonic solution. So if we take a beaker and we place an animal cell, the solution in which the animal cell is placed is hypotonic. If it is hypo, that means we are comparing it with what is inside the cell. So inside the cell becomes hyper. Second situation is we again take a beaker, place the animal cell and now the outer medium is hypertonic. So if outer medium is hyper, that means the inner becomes hypotonic. And our definition of osmosis in terms of tonicity was movement of solvent takes place from a hypotonic solution to a hypertonic. So in this case, what is going to happen is movement from hypo to hyper. That means water is going to go inside the cell. It is osmosis. It is movement of water. According to our definition from hypo to hyper. Reason? Hypo is dilute. Dilute means less solute. Less solute means more free solvent. So from hypo to hyper water goes in. Osmosis is taking place but here water is going inside the cell. So we call it endoosmosis. So what is happening first is movement of water in. Water goes into the cell. The process is known as endoosmosis. What will happen when more and more water goes inside the cell? The cell is going to swell. And when the cell swells due to entry of water, then it is known as turgid. So cell becomes turgid. And if this continues, the cell will swell and ultimately it will rupture. So the sequence of events that would take place here if we have taken an animal cell and placed it in hypotonic solution. First, it's going to be endosmosis <coughs> as water moves from hypo to hyper. Because of entry of water, the cell is going to become turgid, it's going to swell and finally it will rupture. Coming to second situation. Again, movement of water is going to take place from hypotonic to hyper. In this case, the cell is hypotonic and the medium is hyper. So here water molecule is going to come out of the cell. We will call it exoosmosis. So here exoosmosis takes place. And if water is coming out of the cell, the cell is going to shrink first. And this shrinking which is taking place due to exit of water we call the cell becoming flaccid. So here the cell becomes flaccid and then the cell is going to shrink. This experiment was done with RBC and after this flaccid nature and shrinking, RBC became like this and such RBC was called crenated. So it gets crenated. But crenated term is used for RBCs normally because this is how this experiment was done. So the situation is animal cell placed in two conditions, either hypo or hypertonic. Then in this case, either water goes into the cell or comes out of the cell. The second situation which we would take up is Solutions are going to remain the same, we'll change the cell. So in second case, we take a plant cell and we place the plant cell into same two situations. One, 
in hypotonic solution and second is going to be in hypertonic solution. Let us see what happens here. This is our beaker and we have placed an animal cell, oh, sorry, a plant cell. Plant cells are normally geometric, so we are drawing it like this. And the outer medium or the liquid in which they are placed or the cell is placed is hypotonic. That means the content inside the cell becomes hypertonic. In second situation, again, plant cell is placed in hypertonic solution. If the solution is hypertonic, the content inside the cell is hypo, less concentrated than the outer medium. Now let us see what is going to happen here. Definition is movement of solvent or water takes place from hypotonic to hyper. So in this case, what is going to happen is water moves into the cell. That means first step is same, endosmosis. Endosmosis is going to take place. Because of endosmosis, the cell is going to swell a little bit. So we call it turgid. The cell becomes turgid. And after that, water goes in, the cell becomes turgid. It is not going to rupture as happened in case of animal cell. The plant cell does not rupture because it has a rigid cell wall around it. So here we write, it does not rupture due to rigid cell wall. So this cell wall prevents a rupturing of the cell. So water goes in, the cell is going to swell a little bit in the sense it becomes turgid, but the wall, that is cell wall, prevents it from rupturing. In the second situation, when we are keeping the plant cell in a hypertonic solution, what are the changes? Water moves from hypo to hyper. So here, exosmosis will take place. When exosmosis takes place, the cell is going to get flaccid. Here also, the cell will become flaccid. But the shape is not going to change. It's not going to shrink. Water comes out from that large vacuole which is there in the plant cell. So let me remove this hypo word from here and say this is the big vacuole. The water which comes out actually comes out from this vacuole. When water is coming out from the vacuole, that is the sap part, this vacuole will become smaller. When it becomes small, all the cytoplasmic content which is there in the cell, it gets detached from the wall and starts moving towards one side. Such a cell is termed as plasmolyzed. And the process is known as plasmolysis. So in this case, movement is same from hypo to hyper. That means water is going to come out of the cell. Exosmosis takes place. Because of exosmosis, it gets flaccid also. But the shape of the cell is not changing, again because of this rigid cell wall. But as water has come out, the vacuole has become smaller in size. So the complete cytoplasmic content which was surrounding this vacuole has also detached from the wall and it has moved towards one side. Such a cell is called plasmolyzed cell and the process is plasmolysis. So this cell gets plasmolyzed and the process is known as plasmolysis. What will happen if we place a plasmolyzed cell in water? A plasmolyzed cell means the water has come out. So here we are taking a different situation of this cell. 
So we are placing a plasmolyzed cell here. Plasmolyzed cell means all its cytoplasmic content has gone to one side and we are placing it in water. As its water has gone out, now the concentration inside is going to be more. That means inner condition is hyper and here is only water. So this is less concentrated. This is hypo. So in this case, again, water moves from hypo to hyper. That means endosmosis will take place. Cell will regain its water. Vacuole will become again normal size and the cytoplasm, cytoplasm will again spread out in the complete area. We will call this process as reverse of plasmolysis. It will be called deplasmolyzed. So here the cell gets deplasmolyzed. When is cell getting deplasmolyzed? When we have placed a plasmolyzed cell in water. Then water enters into the cell, the vacuole becomes bigger, cytoplasm again spreads all over and it gets normal. So we call this process as reverse of plasmolysis, that is deplasmolysis. And the cell gets deplasmolyzed. In the next part, we will take up isotonic solution when the concentration of two solutions is same and we will also try to see certain applications of this process of osmosis.